whose Western companies are under increasing pressure from being tied to the CCP's human rights abuses and slave labor in Xinjiang. Now, after facing pressure, the NBA cut ties to training centers in the region. Mark Tatum, the NBA's deputy commissioner, wrote in a letter, quote, The NBA has no involvement with the Xinjiang Basketball Academy for more than a year, and the relationship has been terminated. Now, this letter was sent in response to a letter from Senator Marsha Blackburn, who questioned the NBA's ties to China and to abuses in Xinjiang specifically, while also questioning how much money the Basketball Association lost by not airing games in China that was estimated to be in the hundreds of millions, which also ties into self-censorship of the NBA when it came, for example, to supporting the Hong Kong protests. Now, Blackburn wrote in a follow-up letter that the NBA's move to abandon its presence in Xinjiang, quote, should motivate U.S. corporations to cut Communist Party ties. She stated, quote, China is responsible for some of the greatest human rights violations of our time. The NBA's decision to abandon its footprint in Xinjiang, where millions of Muslim Uyghurs have been brutally confined in re-education camps, is the right way to condemn Chinese oppression and should motivate other American corporations to decry such atrocities. Making money and standing up for human rights should not be mutually exclusive. Now, she continues, however, noting that the NBA has additional partnerships in China, such as with Chinese e-commerce company Alibaba, and noted that Chinese companies have been engaged in stealing American intellectual property. She wrote this, quote, The NBA's continued financial relationship with Alibaba requires a closer look. Now, similarly, an EU top official called out Volkswagen for being, quote, complicit in the CCP's abuses of Uyghurs. And other car companies, including General Motors, BMW, and Mercedes, are also being called out on similar grounds. And this comes on the heels of many other businesses and industries, including, for example, the apparel industry and big companies like Nike and Adidas, also being exposed and called out for using slave labor and their supply chains under the CCP's abuses of Muslim Uyghurs. And all of this comes after the United States placed sanctions on CCP officials and businesses for their involvement in human rights abuses and slave labor in Xinjiang. U.S. Treasury Department Secretary Steve Mnuchin said in a July 9th press release on that, quote, The United States is committed to using the full breadth of its financial powers to hold human rights abusers accountable in Xinjiang and across the world. So what's happening again? Now, this is sending a strong message to companies that do business with the CCP. That as the Chinese regime's many human rights abuses are exposed, that these companies can be held liable and exposed with it. And so what's again happening? The United States sanctioned these different Chinese companies and these different Chinese individuals for their abuses, and along with that, called out different companies for being involved as well in that region. And on a grassroots level, many of these companies have been named and shamed for their direct involvement, for example, in slavery. And so what does this mean again? Now, Xinjiang is the focus of this, but across China, the Chinese Communist Party has many human rights abuses very similar to this and some on an even larger scale. Western corporations and investors have been pouring money into China, and many companies have been either directly or indirectly involved in things like slave labor and other crimes against humanity. These companies now risk being exposed and held accountable for that. And this ties into the bigger picture of companies pulling out of China. The big question is, is it financially viable to stay in China? Now, a few different issues on this. During this virus outbreak, many countries pulled out their businesses and supply chains from China, India, for example, and Japan, for example, even paying companies in their supply chain to leave because they saw that if the CCP decides to, for example, lock down the country or if it decides to nationalize a company, as it did, for example, even with American mask makers and forbade them from sending masks to the United States during a pandemic, that the CCP can do that and that it can harm their own supply chains, their own economy and their own interests. It is becoming a liability for them to stay in China based on this, especially as the CCP is becoming more authoritarian. But in addition to this, many companies did not pull out of China. And many companies and investors, for example, had been pouring money into China despite all of this. This made change. Because what has happened in Xinjiang with these sanctions is on two different fronts. The United States in one way is putting sanctions on CCP officials, not just for their abuses in Xinjiang, but also for what they did in Hong Kong. And it sent a message not just to the Chinese Communist Party and its leaders that they can be held accountable individually for their actions, but also to Western companies and foreign companies that they can also be held individually accountable for being involved in these abuses. And they're being told that they need to check whether their companies are involved in human rights abuses. Now, if the full issue of this were exposed, very likely we're going to see that some of these companies did this knowingly, that some of them may have known that their factories were using slave labor, at the very least based on the cost of production, that some of them, if they went and investigated these factories and found out what was taking place there and still chose to manufacture, what is going to happen to these companies? Now, even if they're not sanctioned, if it comes out on an international level that these companies have been directly involved in human rights abuses, including slave labor, what is going to happen to them? Is it a bigger liability for them, for example, to pull out and move their production to India, for example? Or is it a bigger liability for them to continue operating in China and risk being exposed or sanctioned? Now, that said, folks, again, we're broadcasting.